Hello everyone, this is L5 and welcome to Global My Central Toy Review. And today's are you looking at the 1989 release by Hasbro of the G.I. Joe Vehicle and Action Figure Review. And today's vehicle and action figure review will be looking at the Destos Razorback and its driver, the Iron Grenadier Wild Ball. Now for this entire set here, I managed to get it in eBay for $50. That's not counting the shipping part of course. Now before we begin the review, we'll start off and take a look at the Iron Grenadier Wild Ball. Be right back. And we're back and this time we'll take a look at the Iron Grenadier Wild Ball here. But first things first, let's take a look at the file card. Now the file card here can be located at the back portion of the Wild Razorbacks box. So you can actually cut it out and there you have it, this is your file card. The back portion of the file card is basically the cardboard itself so nothing special there. Now let's take a close look on the file card by bringing the file card up a little bit closer. Top section there stated code name Wild Ball Razorback Driver. Here you got a nicer image of the Razorback Driver, the Wild Ball. Now, in the write-up is rather long, so it stated the Razorback is the principal front-light assault vehicle for the Iron Grenadiers. Its impressive firepower capabilities can totally destroy an enemy vehicle within minutes. Only the quote and unquote creme de la creme of the Iron Grenadiers can be admitted into the Razorback driver program. All recruits must endure a torturous training schedule that stresses discipline, discipline and more discipline. Those who survive receive the respect of being a Razorback driver and many shares of stock in Destro's lucrative profit sharing plan. Very interesting. And at the bottom, someone quoted, The Iron Green India forces, though numerically inferior to Cobra, are better trained, better equipped and enjoy the benefits of well, better qualified leadership. The Wild Balls are formidable opponents on the battlefield because they embody the most fearsome attributes, the will to succeed. Quite interesting. Although whatever is mentioned at the code there is totally opposite in the Marvel G.I. Joe comics when they first appeared, which is kind of funny and ironic at the same time. Anyways, move the file card on one side. Let's take a look at the Wild Balls accessories. First, we have his tubing. Now, basically this tubing here connects from the helmet to his left arm, there's a small little peg there. I'm not too sure why they gave such a long tubing because it looks kind of awkward and silly at the same time. And the tubing there is, of course, made of a black plastic material color with no paint job at all. And here we have the Wild Balls helmet. Again, nothing special with the helmet, just made of a black plastic material color. And you get to see there's a smaller peg there, and that's where you connect the tubing there and the other end connects to the arm. The helmet is made of a black plastic material color and there's nothing really special about the helmet. You got the helmet and also sort of like a goggle there on this bottom section of the helmet here but basically it doesn't seem like a goggle because when you try to place the helmet onto the figure's head it doesn't well close the figure's eyes. It barely reaches to the top section of the visor that the figure is wearing. Otherwise, that the entire helmet is seem nothing impressive. So I'm gonna move this one side. Let's take a look at the colors applied onto the wild ball driver. Now, for the wild ball driver here, it actually made of two types of plastic metal color, but there is some paint job. First. The head and the torso is made of a black plastic material color. However, the neck joint there, just below the neck, the collar there is painted in, well, sort of orange, a little bit of red there. The head itself is made of a black plastic material color, but the visor is painted a bit of gold, and the flesh tone skin there is painted as well. Now, the problem with the, well, the wild ball figure is that many of the figures that's been seen in eBay, the most common problem with the wild ball figure itself is that the nose paint job tend to chip off, leaving a well a bit of a black spot on the on the nose itself. So it looks kinda weird. Even for my figure here there's a bit of a chip of the flesh 
flesh paint job there but you're better able to see it just a tiny little portion now the arms the waist and the entire pair of legs there are made of a orange or reddish orange plastic material color but there are some bits of it that's been painted first off for the arms here the lower arms here is painted a bit of gold here on the wrist some sort of communication device the belt here is painted in black as you can see even at the belt buckle as well the other side of the arm there's no paint job ties has no paint job and for the boots it's painted in black and that's about it with the colors there so it doesn't look very interesting at all even with the helmet on it looks even more ridiculous now let's take a look at the figures mode now everything you see on this figures mode here is not being reused at all everything on this figures mode is all unique parts when this figure was released in 1989 none of the parts were reused at all so everything is all unique the head scope is all right it looks pretty plain it's just a well a man with a hood on the entire head there and he's wearing a visor that's in sort of gold leaving his entire face exposed the body mode is sort of all right he's actually wearing some sort of bandolier strap here as you can see you're better able to see it it's quite dark shoulder upper shoulder part here the upper bicep part here you have a bit of padding one side of the arm here the wrist itself and there's some sort of a mechanical device i assume some sort of a communication device or a control system on the other side of the arm there there's a small little peg now that peg is meant to connect the tubing again there's a bit of padding there as well but nothing that impressive the belt itself looks kind of weird as you can see there's a circle in the middle and two straps on one side one huge strap on the other as you can see there I'm not too sure why their uniform design so bizarre now the tie section there each side of the tie there's a bit of padding as well bottom section of the boots itself is just well padded boots and that's about it nothing that really special now let's take a look at the figure's articulation the head here is on a ball joint but you can only move the head left and right straight down and side to side just a little bit torso joint here is on an o-ring so you can only twist the joint left right back or down you cannot twist the entire joint 360 degrees otherwise you'll stress the o-ring rubber band there and it will break shoulder joints here can turn 360 degrees and lift the shoulders this high Wrist, the elbow joint here can turn 360 degrees like so and elbow joint here can bend this far there is no wrist joint because this is a well 80s action figure here so complex and well more articulation were not invented yet back then now hip joints here can move forward straight and to the sides and knee joint can bend only this far there is no ankle joint now let's fully equip the wild ball with all the accessories first we'll put in the helmet as you can see the helmet like so you cannot push the helmet all the way in this is as far as you can go next we'll connect the tubing and this is one thing i really don't like about the tube itself because the tubing is rather long and you see the length of the tubing is extremely long actually put the figure standing pose there and there you have it the iron grenade wild ball i am not feeling for this figure because it the colors itself is kind of distracting it's rather bright in orange or a bit of reddish orange and the tubing there is so long you can actually cut it but i don't want to mess around with the vintage stuff here and the tubing is really long he only has a helmet for an accessory there's no pistols there's no weapons at all this is just it 
the mold of the figure is really that isn't that impressive at all nothing that detailed so if I'm gonna give a rating of the wild ball I'll give it a 5 a 5 out of 10 although the figures mold is unique and it's actually quite a good thing that they didn't reuse the parts but it looks so bland and bright in colors so 5 out of 10 for the wild ball driver next up let's take a look at the Razorback be right back and we're back and this time we'll take a look at Destro's Razorback now first things first let's take a look at the colors being applied onto the vehicle itself now bear in mind this is a 1989 toy so there's absolutely no paint job being applied onto the vehicle itself everything you see here is pure plastic material color However, the vehicle is laden with a lot of sticker labels, as you can see from back and to the front itself, making the vehicle look a little bit more nicer looking with a lot of bit more details there. Now, the body itself, from the front to the back, of course, is actually in two pieces, starting from here to here, and from the back until here, made of a yellow plastic material color. This cover here at the edge where the ball terror sits is also made of a yellow plastic metal color we have eight missiles each of the missiles itself is made of a bronze colored plastic metal color and here we have the canopy hatch made of a clear translucent plastic however for the ball turret here it's more towards to a gray pl clear translucent plastic and speaking of gray each side of the vehicle here, you've got the joint itself, also the engine cover, and also the seating inside the turret itself is made of a grey plastic material colour. And for the rest, it's all made of black plastic material colour. For From the missile rack here, to the guns, radar dish, the wheels, the bumper, the seat belts, the hookup at the back, and the antenna, all made of a black plastic material color. Now, let's take a look at the vehicle's mold, the details of the vehicle itself. Now, the sheer size of the vehicle is absolutely gorgeous. We'll do the size comparison later. So, in the front portion here, we have the, well, the driver's seat and the navigator's seat next to him. So, you can actually open up this entire portion up like so. I have to twist this one side so you can fully open the entire hatch and you get to see the seating inside. Very nice. As you can see, I'll move it upward so you can see more details of the seating. Now, there's a lot of panels, buttons on each side of the armrest, so that's on the middle portion as well. Surprisingly, there's not a single handle. Yes, joystick handle found inside the seating itself. So we have two seatings, and here we have seat belts to secure, uh, well, each figure for each seat. Very nicely done. I'll move this forward also we have bumper a very nice black bumper here with a lot of panels and platings and rivets very nice this section here is a radar dish that turns 360 degrees each side of the vehicle itself we have a total amount of eight missiles so there will be four missiles placed on the missile rack per each side of the vehicle and yes the missiles can be removed like so the details of the missile itself is very simplistic as you can see that you also note that each side of the fin of the missile itself there's a tiny little hole but at the bottom there's nothing there very nice and you can plug in to the pink here like so very nice there's a bit of details found on this 
section here as well bit of tubing grill panels very nicely done let's not forget each side of the vehicle itself we have this joint here we can see a lot of pistons going on very nicely done let's not forget the wheels itself very nicely done with the details of the wheels so as you can see the details inside the wheel where the rim is a lot of rivets nicely done here we have the back portion of the vehicle itself we have the an antenna which on the top section of the antenna is flat here we have the platform you will notice there's pegs there for the figure to stand on so there's four pegs so you can store in four figures plugged in onto the pegs itself standing onto the platform here we have a small little hookup you can hook up to any well weapon platforms that you have like the Cobra apps or the heat sink missile system and so on I'm gonna tilt this upwards first so we get to see the engine cover here you can actually remove the engine cover like so and you get to see the engine on one side here the other side is empty not too sure why they do that here we have the engine cover so place it back like so you have to be careful with the engine cover because especially on these two tabs here it tends to well, stress a lot if you keep on opening it and closing it so you have to be extra careful on that now I forgot to mention that both sides of the missile rack can turn 360 degrees as well there's a bit of joint there furthermore you've got the ball turret here that also can turn 360 degrees the antenna is actually blocking it a little bit there you go we have a dual barrel cannon here very nicely done as you can see the details of the cannon itself one side actually has a tubing here the other side is different of course the the cannon itself the entire turret can also twist upwards as well since it's a ball and finally by lifting this entire section up you can pull down the seating area like so which is a bit hard so you have to push it down like so here we have the seating there the seating actually has two joysticks to show you if you can actually see it there's two joysticks inside there's also a lot of buttons as well and paneling and there's also a seat belt so you can secure a figure inside and then close it like so very nice for the razor bank there's a lot of nice function first I have to adjust the ball itself one of the problems with the turret itself because it's a two halves of a ball turret as you can see that that's the line itself so every time you try to twist it, it tend to separate the two pieces together when you reach to the middle portion on this section here there's a bit of articulation going on with the razor back with the turret and the missile rack here and even the radar dish very nice now there are a total of eight wheels two wheels on the front portion on one side and two wheels at the back does it roll well enough actually it does all of the wheels roll very well very nice now let's try to put in the wow ball Move this on one side first. Place the wild ball driver inside. I have to pull the seat belt first. Put 
place in the seat belt. The tubing just popped off, but it's still alright. As you can see, the tubing is so long, it just took off <laughs> the other side of the space. You can always have it slip in like so, but you end up having the, the tubing pop off again. Very nice. Very nicely done. I really, I really like the vehicle. And the final feature, which I'm, well, holding it up until now to show everyone, is that the Razorback actually has its secondary mode. This is the first mode itself. The secondary mode will be the siege mode. So all you have to do is push the back portion and the front portion together like so because the joint at the bottom itself actually locks it in place but for my version it's a bit too old so it doesn't lock us properly as you can see here adjust the gun a little bit like so there you go I'm gonna move the camera up a little bit very nice this is its siege mode here, which is also serve as an anti-air vehicle where it launches all the missiles up in the sky or shoot anyone from the sky using this gun itself. Very nice. The Razorback is, I would say, one of my favorite vehicles. Now you must be wondering, is it compatible to the 25th or the 30th anniversary figures? Well, I'm going to move back the camera down a little bit. We'll sh I'll show you how it looks like fitting all the 25th anniversary figures in just a moment. Be right back. And we're back and this time the Razorback is being crewed with all the 25th anniversary Iron Grenadiers figures as you can see there. Now for the driver seat and the navigator seat the two figures here are sitting comfortably because there's a lot of space inside they are also clipped in with the seat belts and if you're asking if the figure in the ball turret itself is sitting nicely or not yes the figure is sitting nicely in set in there and all you have all I have to do is just pop the seat light so and you can see the figure is sitting nicely there with the seat belt on as well can't be too careful when you're driving such a vehicle considering all your all protection is is glass maybe shatterproof we won't know overall the vehicle is a lot of fun as I mentioned before this is my favorite vehicles among all the vintage vehicles that I actually own my favorite vehicle because first of all it has a lot of nice firepower eight missiles four missiles four missiles per missile rack on each side of the vehicle we have a dual barrel cannon for the turret itself it actually has a siege mode which is actually not bad looking if you think about it nicely done Furthermore, we have a turret that actually is a ball itself, so there's a nice little articulation that you can turn 360 degrees there, well, depending on how you adjust it. Very nice, you've got a little bit of articulation for some of the joints itself, and it rolls very well without any squeaking sounds. It rolls pretty far too, because due to the amount of wheels it has, very nice. Details-wise, it's still alright. It's not an amazing detailed vehicle, but it has a lot of fun. There's a lot of playability here. It can carry a lot of troops. If you're using vintage figures, yes, it can carry way more troops, especially on the back portion of the platform itself. But if you're using the newer figures, it's still all right. You can fit in with your new figures as well. Either way, this vehicle is awesome. So if I'm gonna give a rating out of this, detail-wise, mm, it's not too great, as I said. It's not really amazing that will wow you. The color-wise is all right, but I really love its play playability and its function. It makes sense for this vehicle. So if, if I'm gonna give a rating out of this, I'll give the Razorback 
9 9 out of 10 yes so I thank you all for watching this is Lucy05 and I'm signing off